All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me today, Wednesday. Uh, a little chilly out there. Um, starting basketball interviews, finishing up soccer tomorrow. And the first two guests are Rachel Capua from Jackson Memorial and Jordan Keaton from Donovan Catholic. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. Jordan has the honor of being my first repeat guest on here. Yeah, it's nice and special. <laughs> and hopefully this one comes out a lot better than the first one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so are you two ready for basketball season? Yeah. I mean, I've it's like really frustrating to me having to wait so much longer than usual. Like we would be what, like three, four weeks into the season now and like not having a game before Christmas for WOBM or the day after, it was like kind of heartbreaking because you're so used to it. So I'm definitely ready for things to just kick up, even if it is kind of like a makeshift season. Right now, anything's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I'm just ready to play, just get with the team, practice, and just playing the games already. Yeah, I mean, like Jordan said, you know, WOBM, me and Dave were talking last night. The finals would probably be this Saturday if uh, WOBM was going on or Sunday, I guess. Um, now, talking basketball, how long have you two played together on uh, on the Bells? Oh, my God, what was it? Since, like, I think sophomore. Sophomore, sophomore year. Day? Yeah. It was, mm -hmm. like, I've been with JT since eighth grade. I played with the Bells. Um, and – then like a couple years later, Rachel joined and everything. And I remember practice. I was like, Rachel, come on, like you gotta come over to my house. <laughs> and then so just from like day one of tryouts, like me and Rachel, I guess, never really knew each other besides just playing. And then mm -hmm. from day one of tryouts, like you could tell like we were gonna be really good friends and teammates. Yeah. How do you, uh, you know, Jordan? You answered this when we did the last interview, but Rachel, how do you enjoy playing with JT? I love it. He definitely was like a different like coaching like aspect that I never experienced before. So it was just great. Like just like seeing like, like the, the different like coaching like aspects of him. And he just taught me like so much, which was like awesome. I, you know, I told Jordan this, you know, I never really go to AAU stuff, but I caught a couple of the Bells stuff and it takes a special uh, person to be able to handle John's, uh, uh, sarcasm. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You're like, you want to just sit there and like crawl up into a ball, but you know, if you do that, then it's like, he wins. And it's like, no, in this relationship, both of us have to engage in the sarcasm back and forth because you know, it, his sarcasm isn't meant to be derogatory. It's not meant to be oh. mean. It's basically just saying, instead of yelling at you at the top of his lungs, it's get your head out of your behind and play how you know you can play. And I think that was just definitely something for me I don't know about Rachel but that kind of sparked and helped me take my game to the next level and under and definitely be prepared for college and high school basketball that not every coach is going to kiss the like, kiss up to you you're going to have coaches that are going to knock you down and bring you back up and I think he definitely prepared us perfectly for the next level Rachel you have anything to add to that no she kind of hit it right spot on <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I enjoy talking to John uh, JT a lot. You know, he uh, you know he bugs me a lot to get his girls on too for interviews. So he's he, he's a very supportive coach. So that you know that's all you have to ask for. Um, now moving to you know I want to talk NYIT a little bit. What was the process? You know, the recruiting process when you first you both first uh, picked NYT because. Uh, to me that, you know, that, that was a little, little surprise in both of you, you know, same school and uh, um, which, uh, you know, JT spoke to me after you both committed. And uh, he said, I guess he talked to the coach there and saying, you know, had, how he had the great ideas of how he was going to use both of you in, in his system over there. So just talk how that process uh, went out with NYIT. Um, I mean, I don't think either of us really knew at first that both of us were being recruited by them. Cause like, no one really talks about recruiting in girls basketball. Like you don't really share that kind of information with people outside of your family and your coaches. So I don't think it really was anything until I think one of us was like, it might've been Snapchatting each other. And we saw that like the other was on campus and it was like, oh my God, wait, you? And it was just like one of those things that to me, like having a buddy then that would kind of be on campus with you, like going to college is scary. So having someone that you've been friends with, you've played with, um, that was able to be there for you was just kind of a great like addition to what NYT had to offer for us. Um, for me, the offer was really great. I knew I had a chance from day one to be a impact in his system that he had. 
Um, and then I think kind of just like the whole thing was sort of fell into place. You know, you had someone to go with, you had a chance to shine from day one. So it was kind of just something, I guess, that fell into place, which, you know, unfortunately fell out of place, but. <laughs> yeah, it was actually funny because Kenny, when like when I committed, Jordan committed the day before me. And then when I committed too, he called me and he's like, oh, like, you know, Jordan's like committing like to MIT. And I was like, yeah, like I knew like, you know? <laughs> like I already knew, like he didn't even know that we were like talking about it like the whole time. They had no idea that but, like, we were so, I guess, as close as we are like yeah, I don't think anyone know. had any idea they were kind of just like wait really? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it, that, that's because that's where you know I first got the idea to do a joint um you know interview with you two you know playing on the same AAU team and you know committing to the same college um I hear great things about that the coach there you know you know obviously you know Dave knows everybody you know JT spoke very highly of him um what was it like I, re I remember the day when I saw the post that they were eliminating the sports programs. I was actually driving to Point Pleasant for the summer league when I saw the post. And uh, right away, I called college coach and said, did you see this? And uh, they didn't see it. Nobody really saw it because I was talking to a couple of people there. And they didn't even know yet. Uh, what was that process like when NYIT eliminated the sports program for two years? The day I found out, I was at work working like the morning to afternoon shift and I had like a little break in between like it was a dead period so I checked my phone I was scrolling through Twitter and I think I actually didn't see it on Twitter or I might have seen it and just skipped over it and figured whatever and then I was on Instagram and I was like if they post something on Instagram and Twitter that's usually not good or whatever so I read it and all I remember was everything came flooding to my brain my heart dropped I was like what does this mean like I never signed any papers what is like all I am is verbal right now so does that mean I'm done? I was like, oh my God, I texted my parents and they were like, don't freak out. I'm like, how can I not freak out? Like, this is saying we're done. Like, I'm a freshman in two years. Like, that's not, that's not not affecting me. This, this is my freshman year. So I was just like, oh my God. And then eventually, you know, I think later on that night, um, I ended up like seeing one of the coaches from the short conference or something. And they were just talking to me and they're like, you know what, like, I know it sucks, but, and it's not what you want to hear, but I really think this is going to affect your scholarship. I'm like, yeah, me too. Like, I think so too. Um, and then the next day I got a call from coach Kenny and coach Rob and, you know, they explained exactly what I'm thinking is what's happening. Um, and it really just blindsided everyone. Like they had no idea. The girls had no idea. We had no idea. It caught everyone by surprise. So it was definitely just something that was like a shell shock, but you know, you have your moment of sadness and you had to think the next day and times moving forward. It wasn't our fault. It's not like we did something stupid and lost a scholarship. It was yeah. fate of the world. Like, it's yeah. crazy right now. 2020 obviously is not the best year for anybody. So COVID, you know, messed up things, messed up scholarships, messed up athletic programs, colleges all around. And there's just nothing we could control. And, you know, maybe it was taking us in a better step in our life. So, Rachel, how was the process for you? For me, I was on vacation, actually, and Goody texts me, and she's like, did you hear what happened? And I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean, what happened? And then she was just like, and then she sent me the screenshot of, like, the post that NYT posted, saying, like, oh, like, it's done. And I was just like, oh, my heart, like, just sunk. Like, I was just, like, in disbelief. Like, I couldn't even believe, like, that that was, like, real. Yeah. But I like came the thing that hit me the most too was when one of the coaches texted me and they were just like oh it's been like such like great knowing you like and building a relationship like it was just like so sad like oh my god like, like we're having a divorce I don't right know now. I talk to you guys anymore like it was just like because they built such like a great relationship with like me Jordan like all the players they were recruiting it was they just like they knew how to like build such like good relationships yeah like it was like so. we were talking to friends not even like the pressure of being recruited, mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I have to sound proper on the phone, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was just, no, like, we want you and we're going to be friends with you so that, you know, you feel safe, you feel happy, like, you're not being pressured in any way. And then, like, like Rachel said, like, getting the, it was nice knowing you look, look <laughs> for your future, like, that's, that was kind of heartbreaking. It was like I was going through a divorce or a breakup, like, with a coach, like, crazy. And then, you know, I remember I saw the thing and I knew Rachel was on vacation and I didn't want to text her and be that person to like ruin the vacation. 
And then she got the text from Goody and then texted me and was like, oh my God. I was like, I don't want to tell you. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> it's, it's fun because I actually, I text Sarah uh, Desner. And I said, how did Rachel handle the news? And she, her response was, she's on vacation right now. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't, I don't know. And uh, I ended up seeing them that day at the, the, the basketball league. And, you know, everyone was just shocked. Um, what were the steps you, you two took, right? You know, you know, after, you know, it hit you, you know, you, you had your react, your reaction. And then what was the next steps you took to, um, you know, to put yourself back out there that, you know, you're available? Um, so basically like me and my parents, you know, after talking and obviously like for me, when I committed, I called every coach that had offered me that I had a good relationship with and said, you know, thank you for everything. Thank you for building a relationship. Thank you. For, thank you for offering, you know, and like basically told them, you know, best of luck to you. I hope there's no hard feelings, whatever. So once me and my parents sat down, it was kind of like, okay, I guess it's time to call everyone back and be like, Hey, how's, how's it going? Like, you know, how, like, what's up? I mean, I don't know if you saw, but I'm back out there. And basically just starting from, you know, square one, when really we had an understanding of the recruiting process, but now we had to go back right before senior year and reestablish connections with all these coaches, all these colleges, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of just start over again with no AAU season. And then, you know, obviously that was the biggest like scare for me is you get recruited a lot in girls basketball on the circuit, not so much like high school basketball. It's more so if they see you in AAU and they love you, then they're coming to high school, not vice versa so much anymore. So it was kind of one of those really scary things that I hope these other schools still have spots open that I can maybe, you know, squeeze my way in or they remember how I played or they don't think anything could have changed. Like they still want me as a player, as a person, you know, so kind of just trying to see who was still available or looking for availability um, and then just trying to start over from square one again and, you know, post my highlight tape everywhere possible, email everyone that even if they didn't offer me that I had an interest in uh, way before and just kind of see where things were going to go. Rachel, was it similar for you? Yeah. I mean, basically same, like you had to start from square one, but yeah. Goody definitely like just like calmed my nerves like just when I was texting her about like everything she was just always there and she was like don't worry like we're gonna figure this out we're gonna get you through it like you're gonna have other offers like it's gonna be okay so she was definitely like just like keeping my hopes up and just like having her like just reach out to like so many coaches and then I had to like email all like the coaches that I had on the list like before everything yeah. so it was just like it was scary like just like starting from square one and then not having an AU season you just really didn't know like you're like can I get an offer can I not like you don't know what schools have like all their people already picked out so yeah, yeah. I and have uh, to say, Jansen and JT definitely like made me feel safe too like at the fact that you know like you're a good player I'm a good student I'm a good person I would like to think somewhat um and you know they were just like we're here for you whoever you need me to reach out to whatever like people you need me to reach out to to reach out to someone and see what's what you let me know and we'll be here every step of the way even if it wasn't meaning committing until May of next year you knew like some something would come out of it eventually it just you know sucked like senior year then everything kind of yeah that had to be you know all the 2021s that, I mean, you two kind of recommitted kind of, you know, before school year started, which is good, but there's a lot of 2021s that have it and it has to be stressful because, you know, going into September, who knew if there was going to be a basketball season for even high school. And uh, so it probably adds to the stress level. So it was good that, you know, you two found a home, you know, pretty quickly after the situation. It wasn't, it wasn't, what was it, about a month maybe? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think I know I so like it was funny because I committed on Mother's Day and then I decommitted on my mom's birthday. <laughs> she was like, I guess it's just something about moms. And I was like, no, don't, don't do that. And then, you know, eventually, I guess it was probably maybe like two weeks into the school year. I think we both committed again. And I was just like, OK, I mean, here we go. Whatever. So um, both of you talked that uh, process. You know, I think. Rachel, you came out first with the ECU and then Jordan was, what, a few days or a week later, yeah, I think? Like yeah. What was that process, uh, you know, committing to ECU and why was that a good fit? Um, 
again. I don't think either of us knew that ESU was recruiting us again. I think we found out at a practice. Yes, we yeah. found out at a practice, and JT was just asking us, like, hey, so you guys got any info? And I was like, yeah, I went and visited, like, ESU, and I don't think Rachel heard me. And then she said, like, yeah, I got to visit with them next week. I was like, what did you say? <laughs> she was like, ESU. I'm like, I just was there two days ago. And she was like, oh. And then it was kind of the same thing, like, the connection and, like, contact we had about, you know, how we felt about this school as we did with NYT. It was kind of like, okay, you know what, maybe we can, like, just pick things up from one school and move it to the next. And, you know, like, reaching out with Coach Steph, like, she is the absolute best. Like, she makes you feel like you are the best person in the world, even if you're having a bad day. It's like, girl, no, like, come on, like, let's go get food or something. Like, you know, she's just, like, someone that – is like your best friend now but you can tell as soon as basketball you step onto the court and you put those sneakers on she puts her hair up in the ponytail it's it's game time it's all business and I love that because you know going away from home even if it's not super far away it's only like two and a half hours it's still you know you're far away you're far away from home so to have someone that made you feel safe and she's from Jersey too like it's just something you know I don't know it felt it felt right Mm -hmm. how about you Rachel what was the process when uh you know, first uh, contact in ECU. Yes, yeah, so I remember Jeff's like first like phone call, and like I was at the beach at the time, and I remember like just talking to her for at least like a half an hour, like just like talking, like just as like a friend, like just being like there for like me, like through like the whole NYIT thing, and like how she was saying, "Oh, I have a beach house in Lavalette," like all this stuff, and I was like, "Oh, like you're just reminding me more of like my mom," because like my mom had a beach house, like all this stuff, and. I remember going to the campus and I was like, wow, like I could really see myself like here. Like, I love how like the campus was like bigger, more like people were there. And like when I saw like the team, I was like, oh, I could see myself fitting in like and being like a good fit for this team. Now she was one, one thing or she's going to kill me when she watches this. I Because I just know, I know she's going to. So like weeks before I had to decommit from NYT, she has a beach house in Lavalette and I worked at Barnacle Bills, which is right on the Ortley and Lavalette border. Her and her niece would come down and go to the arcade. And one day I was like working the door, you know, with like COVID precautions, like letting people in, letting them not in, whatever. And she was like there. And I was like, she looks really familiar. <laughs> and she's like with her family. And, you know, I was just like, you know, whatever, let's just say hello. I was like, hey, excuse me. I was like, are you Coach Steph from ESU? And she was like, uh, yeah, why? She's like, who's asking? And I was like, oh, I played basketball. Like, I think you recruited some of my teammates. Like, I'm Jordan Keating. Like, I go to NYT or I'm going to NYT. She was like, oh, my God. Yeah, you are. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, how's it up? And we were just, like, you know, having a conversation, whatever. And that was before anything happened. And I remember the, like, two days after, um, I decommitted I get like a text from a number or something or a DM or something and she was like hey girl it's coach Dell like got time to talk and I was like all right here we go I guess this is how it's going we went from talking about arcade games to now we're talking about scholarships and ESU and you know it was just like really great that you know it wasn't someone that met me at an AAU event she met me at my job at work and that's how this whole thing started so, like, it will never, ever live down that Barnacle Bills is how I committed to a school. Like, it was insane. Like, it was just something, like, you could tell, like, it was meant to be. Like, when do you ever find a college coach at Barnacle Bills in Ortley and then going to the school? She was one of the few coaches I saw during the season. Uh, you know, she was, you know, watching Bianca. I saw her a, a couple. She was at the senior senior day. Uh, and uh, I think an, another game I, I saw her at. So, um, you know, it's good that, you know, she was coming up, you know, su- support, you know, supporting the players that she's recruiting. How does it feel, uh, you know, being able, you know, next year you're going to be able to play with a point guard like Bianca? Both, I mean, Rachel, you know, playing yeah. with her already. So excited to like have another like four, three years with her. It's going to be like so exciting just to like have that like connection with her already to like now transfer it over to college. So excited. Rachel, how do you feel playing with, I mean, you usually, you're the one handling the point for Donovan, right? Me? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Jordan. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, There's a lot going outside my window right now. That's why I was kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, Jordan. So much for me. Like, my game is more like, you know, me and Rachel are both scorers. Like, that's kind yeah. of our thing. And at Donovan, like, we never really had, like, a – 
I guess, true, true point guard. So it was kind of by committee, like whoever had the ball in their hands, you knew the spot from one through three of if you were shooting that ball, if you were passing the ball, whatever. So, you know, for me, I'm definitely excited to have like a true point guard like Bianca. Um, I mean, I've trained with her with Gary for years now. So I know exactly how Bianca is in like scrimmages and stuff. I know getting the passes that are like that. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for to have someone that can get me the ball in the tight positions that even with that little itty bitty spot of like a chance to score that she has the faith that, yeah, I know you can score. Here's the ball, go do it. You know, I'm definitely excited to have someone that has a confidence in me that I would have in them that they're going to get me the ball and yeah, I'm going to give it to you and you're going to do something with it, you know? Um, So definitely excited um, to like legitimately get to play with her outside of a training environment. So. It's going to be fun next year. You know, I definitely going to have to, make the trip out there to catch, catch a game. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Who's, what's the closest school you, you girls play? Us. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think, I think actually it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm pretty sure everyone else, um, our farthest game would be, I think it's like three hours West from ESU, um, like out in like Western Pennsylvania. Mm. Um, otherwise I don't think, I don't, we don't play any Jersey teams really cause we're in a Pennsylvania, you know, conference yeah. and stuff. Um, so yeah, I really don't think there's anything closer than like two hours, which is basically what we are anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's going to be fun though, following, you know, three shore players at, at the same, you know, same school. And, uh, you know, she's building something nice out, out there in Pennsylvania. Um, before we start wrapping up, let's just do a little, uh, preview for this, this year's season. Um, uh, both, both teams got, um, some transfers in. So let's, uh, I'll start with Rachel. Um, what's it going to be like playing with uh, Lexi? Because, you know, you two in the backcourt, that's going to be, you know, t- tough, uh, two tough defenders there. And uh, yeah. Coach, Goody, Coach Goody already made her comments to me about, you know, how tough she thinks you two are going to be in the backcourt. It's going to be, honestly, I'm so excited to, like, play with, like, another, like, defensive-minded player like me. Because, like, um, during, like, basketball season, I never really had, like, that, like, defender, like, another person. So having her, I'm, like, so excited to, like, have that. And she's going to be, like, the point guard of the team, I have a feeling. She's going to be, like, bringing up the ball and stuff. So that's also going to be good, like, just having, like, her IQ and just, like, having that, like, passing and knowing all the plays. She's going to be, like, a great person to play with. Are you two teams in the same division? No, but we picked each other up for our pickup game. That's a good game. That's a good game. Yeah. Um, how do you I just uh, I want to talk to uh, Zoe a little bit. How do you think she's going to, you know, improve from last season? She's been working hard every day, so she's going to be such like a hard player to defend, especially with her height and all of her like post up moves that she has been like developing. She's going to be a great player and she's only a sophomore, too, which is crazy. I always think that she's like a senior like with me because of like how like developed she is. But. Um, who's going to be you in Tom's River North's division? I am. No. You are. Who's who's in your div- who's in your division? Me. Yeah. We have both the bricks. We picked up Lakewood. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. We're so sad that we, like lost all like the Tom's Rivers. Like that's like, <laughs> that was, we're, like our biggest like competitors and like games were just like so fun. Like just having that like rivals, and now we like lost all of them. Which sucks. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> That's like our old B South division. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jordan, you know, ob- everyone knows Donovan brought in three tra- three transfers. We've got Kaya Joseph from Barnegat, Shelby Barksdale from Modern Day, and Gabby Ross from Manchester. And then you've got all of the returners from, or not all of them, but most of our, or two of our starting five, me and Liv Conroy are back for this year. And then you've got Mac and you've got, um, you know, all of the, I guess, like the younger kids and even seniors that came off the bench and gave us big minutes for defensive stops and even some big shots at times too. Um, but I'm definitely excited for this season. Um, you know, Donovan, I feel like we were never really bad, but we were kind of always that overlooked team. Like we were a good team all four of my years. My freshman year, I know we shared the division with Manchester. We caught them one game sophomore year. And junior year, you know, we had some rough times with Manchester, but we also had, there was always that one game that both teams gave each other a run. Um, And now, 
you know, senior year, we picked up Manchester too for one of our games. I'm excited now that we have more, I guess, versatility. Our entire starting five can score now. Every transfer we have can score. We've got me and Liv Conroy still, who are our teams. I think we were the two leading scorers from last year. And Liv's an amazing defender. Um, so I'm really excited to see what we can bring this year. Plus now, you know, all the Tom's River schools, like Donovan and Tom's River, there's always been that like butting heads just because, you know, it's, it's Donovan and Tom's River. Like that's just always how it's been. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited to see what we can do now that we have tools in every single category of the game. We've got passers, we've got shooters, we've got people that can finish in contact. We've got defenders up the wazoo, like it's insane. Um, so I'm definitely really excited. I wish we had a longer season. I wish we had our full, like, you know, close to 30 game season that maybe instead of going 18 and nine, like last year, we can go 22 and five or whatever, you know, like how we did my freshman year. Um, so I'm definitely excited, hoping that our pod that we have, we can go 10 and 0, um, hoping that our two pickup games, we can go, you know, sorry, Rachel, but hope, I don't know. hope we can catch it. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, just seeing what happens at the end of the season when we do, like, you know, your seasonal eight-game pot or whatever it is with the three games. Um, and see, just seeing how far we can go. We've got a 15-game potential that we can get. Hopefully we get all 15 and it stays that way. So what what I like about with the transfers that came in, each of them had, you know, they're all different styles. Like Shelby's an excellent defender. You know, Gabby could shoot, shoot the lights out, so, you know. Joseph, I really, I don't know, uh, you know, she I never. Fa- all around. She can do pretty much whatever she needs so, to do. And what I liked, you know, during the summer, to me, Olivia improved drastically. Yeah. You know, you know, she, she looked, she looked good. You know, I got to see her play soccer. I didn't realize she was that good in soccer too. Um, so do we think the season's going to, you're going to have a full season? I mean, me and my dad were talking and just because of the way, I don't know why they did it this way, but, you know, New Year's Eve and Christmas were just this past, like, between last week and this week. Like, I get we're not supposed to go out, but there's going to be the people that do go out. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be people that play sports and do go out. Or there's going to be people that have families that are sports families that do go out. And somehow, somehow, some way, something can get, you know, messed up. So we were talking, me and my dad, and we think that maybe they'll push the season back from January 11th and just make it, like, the full two weeks. Um, just so there's that big two week break in between the holidays and when the season's supposed to start as much as I don't want to see that happen, because then it's probably going to get cut even shorter because you're already overlapping with that season three with volleyball and everything. Um, it's a possibility. I'm just hoping that no one has to get shut down because the way I think is if you get shut down for two weeks, you lose half your season right then and there. Mm So JT is on a war path. I, I wouldn't say war path, but he thinks the season should start March 1st. That's what I think. Even if we had, like, as much as I don't want to play outside and play basketball outside, because <laughs> it, it's just, you have to deal with all the elements now. You have to deal with wiping out on blacktop or dealing yeah. with the wind now when you're trying to shoot a three. Or even, like, you know, getting pushed into the pool going up for a layup. Like, <laughs> I mean, as much as I don't want to do that, if I had to make the decision between – a makeshift half season inside with a million protocols, no fans, whatever, versus a pretty close to a full season that are allowed fans with masks and nothing really over the top excessive that would, you know, make it feel like we're trying to play basketball, I guess, in a COVID safe bubble, which is almost inevitable with the way the world is. Um, I would do it. If it meant getting closer to a full season, having my parents, um, come to my games because now they can't come to my senior year games, I would play outside. If it meant, you know, having closer to normal, I would do it. You just, just before we wrap up, what are the – I don't even understand the pods. Like, I understand your pods for the regular season, but what's the postseason look, look like? Um, so, I'm pretty sure – I could be wrong because I could have misinterpreted it, but we do, like, the short conference ambassador thing, and I'm one of the representatives from my school. So, when we were talking at our last meeting – the way they were putting it is the pods will be consisted of eight teams based on like, you know, competitiveness, who's done what throughout the like reg- regular season, whatever. So like you could have a pod of RBC, SJB, okay. like, teams like that, kind of like they did for football. The top okay. teams will go into one pod and then so for the next eight and the next eight. And then you play 
you know, eventually I guess that would lead three games into a championship. Um, and then you just play for like a pod championship. So kind of, I guess how football was where the top couple of teams were in one pod and they deemed like wall the unofficial, like short conference thing. They could probably do that for basketball, like top pod. Um, but it's basically just going to be, you play in a different pod for a championship versus you may have some teams from your regular season pod, but it'll be like a new, I guess, put together. So it's not just Monmouth and Ocean County separated. Like they were originally talking a couple months uh, ago. I don't think so. I'm okay. not entirely sure. I want to say it's just within the short conference, which doesn't really make yeah. sense because then why can't we just play the regular season with who's in the short conference? Yeah, what I I don't get. I see schools like TCA, Paul the Six posting looking for teams to play. Like I don't, I don't. It's I don't. it's like kind of confusing because the way it seems things are going for this season is it's like a day by day, week by week, hour by hour of if Murphy's restrictions change, then there will be a modification made to the season. If out of nowhere he says, okay the indoor capacity to people can be like 25% again or something, then we'll get our fans at our games. You know, like, I mean, I'm not saying that can happen, but just the way it goes, it's, it's all dependent on what Murphy and the state say that can then interfere with what NJSIA and short conference and everything says. He lifted something today. I don't know what it was for indoor sports. I got it. I got it. Um, I know, unless he made, I know January 2nd was when indoor sports were supposed to be. I think that's what he lifted today. So unless he changed it earlier. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping that maybe the more and more these vaccine doses go out and if people actually get them, that maybe it'll start to <laughs> it'll start to like, you know, lift things. And then maybe we can have even if it's not for the full season, if it's for half a season, we can have fans. It'd be better than nothing. Yeah, hopefully, you know, I got it. Dave got mad when I said I'm going to sneak into gyms. <laughs> <laughs> so I got I got a lot of I got a lot of uncles that work in schools. We'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to let you two go. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully I could get in, you know, hopefully I could get to, you know, when you two play each other. And I get sneak. Where is that game? Is it going to be at Jackson or at Jackson? I think it might be easier for me to sneak in there than Donovan. We're home, I think, for Manchester. Yeah. yeah. I got it. Yeah. I, yeah. It all depends where I have friends. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know that the Jackson Memorial Principal's daughter was uh, the big big star at Tom's River North for soccer. Oh, is she? I didn't even yeah, know that. Uh, yeah, she actually trains my niece. Oh, I wow. Did. Yeah, I didn't realize. Like, I met him at the Jackson Tom's River game and because uh, I was talking to his wife, and he, they said he was the principal. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. So nice, nice guy. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining me. I wish you two good luck during the season. I'm sure we'll talk at some point. Um, and definitely look forward to uh, ESU next season. Yep. Thank right. you. Have Thank a you. good day.